Hello, this is Invent Anything, Inventors at Work, John Cronin here. I have a great opportunity today to interview a friend of mine, dear friend of mine, Hank Hirschlag, who uh, at one point has been a client of ours, and I got to know Hank as an inventor. Hank is coming to us from Seneca, South Carolina. Hi, Hank. Hey, John. It's great to be with you, man. Great to be with you today. Yeah, so I was going to ask you before we actually talked about you know, all the inventors at work items that you're doing at your company, BOA, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background before you started BOA. Well, uh, um, my career path, uh, I was a healthcare guy. I started off in, in the diabetes world, uh, selling insulin pumps and managing a sales team uh, in, uh, in the insulin pump uh, and diabetes industry. And, uh, you know, I always like to say that, that I, um, and I learned a lot in there. I learned we had a maternity management program. So I learned a lot about acute care. And I was exposed to just a variety of people in the durable medical equipment world. But I always say that I kind of helped build two diabetes companies. And I was the first guy fired both times the companies were sold. So I may be, maybe I'm an inventor by default. You're a misfit. I'm fired, anymore. <laughs> fired anymore. Right. Uh, well, uh, I, I meet a lot of inventors that are kind of misfits <laughs> that get fired a lot from doing all sorts of things, blowing right. things up, et cetera. Maybe you could tell us uh, a little bit about BOA, B-O-A, and, and a little bit about what that company's about. BOA is actually the culmination of about 15 or maybe even 20 years of, of work. In the diabetes world, I learned a lot about acute care mod modules and acute care uh, systems in, in healthcare. And I tried to take those and apply those to sports. And I thought, what, what, are, what are the acute care situations in sports and it's, you know, e easily when an athlete starts to cramp, they have to address that quickly to get him back on the court or, or field. When an athlete starts to fatigue, the coaches want him back and, and playing. He can't be tired. So I started to see how we could deliver some nutrients that would help athletes. So I started off, I did a lot of patent work and technology around thin film. And you may be familiar with Listerine breath strips or some of this. So I worked with a group in California. We developed a lot of the technology that exists exists today around thin film, so delivering nutrients, bacally or or transmucosally. Uh, so I worked with thin film. I worked with some sublingual drops, really concentrated drops, super um, you know atomized drops that, that delivered nutrients. And then BO is something we've been playing around with for the last few years, trying to basically suspend some molecules in in oxygen or in air, uh, which is easier said than done. So we kind of reversed the system. Now we have a, a, uh, a basically a, a slurry proprietary formulations that we deliver various nutrients. The first case is sodium. And we pressurize the, the uh, canister with ambient air or oxygen to propel the nutrients into the mouth and into the buccal, mu into the mucosal system to deliver them faster. By atomizing the molecules, you get better, better um, bioavailability. So BOA is basically you know, it's aerosolized nutrients delivered directly into the oral cavity. Wow. It's almost like you're going to replace Gatorade, I would think, or something like that. You know, we always say we don't want to replace, we want to set up a new category because you still need to hydrate. You still need to do all these things. Our thing, our, our products are meant just to enhance what you're already doing. I now, see. when we move into some lifestyle products, we have a sleep product, and that could be your only sleep product that delivers, say, melatonin and selenium. But for our sports products, they're mainly to be an adjunct product to what you're already doing that can make you perform better. Right. Cut it. I know that there's probably almost 20 patents that, that you filed since I've met you. And I, and I noticed that when we inter interviewed you, you had really hundreds of ideas. Is there any, so, some of those inventions that you could share with us, uh, maybe some of the stuff that you've been working on that you know is already filed and that you're coming out as new products? Well, you've seen, you know, our basic can, which is, is a, I'm allowed to plug this, is, is, is BOA. It's an aerosolized um, uh, the sodium delivery system. So right now you just basically spray sodium in your mouth, 
and, and, and it gets a new system. Basically in about five to seven minutes, you're gonna to start to, to get study. So now we're just looking at taking all the things that we can uh, um, accompany this product with that can make, turn it in from just in a, into a product into a delivery system. So whether we take this product, uh, right now we already have patents probably, I think there are about six or seven patents that are specific to this product. And then probably about 11 other patents that are adjunct products. So it's fitting this with a, a hydration system. So whether you have this canister is split in two and one side is a liquid or a concentrated liquid. So you're still getting your fluids and the other is the sodium. So we're looking at, at areas that we can um, enhance this product and build around it. So we're giving the, so that, that in, a, in a sense will take the place of some uh, systems that are in use right now. And there's really nothing like this in the market at all right now, is there? Right now, there's nothing like this on the market. Um, you know, when I first came to, to, to you, I actually did a, did a you know, search. I had filed two provisional patents. And the, some of the investors that we're working with introduced me to you, you John, and said, let, let John look at your patents. I guess you've worked with those guys. They're mostly pharmaceutical healthcare guys. And... Um, and you looked at my two and gave me a, you know, maybe an A plus, B minus. I don't know what grade you gave me, but it was good enough to, to get my investors to come on board for this. And then we started working with you and you saw something here. And uh, our CEO, John Pritchett, we had many, many hours of calls with you. And I think we have filed a total of 18 now. And we have about three more to file. Um, so I'll just give you an example of a product that is even not associated, but we have a nice uh, a clip that fits around our canister and it's controlled. It's uh, it attaches to a rare earth magnet. So you can clip it to your bike. If you're okay, yeah. doing this. You can, you can clip it to your backpack. So it won't fall and it's easily accessible. You can grab it and then just clip it right back on. So there we're looking at some, just some accessory products that will tie in um, so that we, we have kind of a full system. Cool. I know that um, as an inventor at work yourself, you know, your inventions seem to span lots of different tech, technology types. Like, you know, you, you talked earlier about the compositions that you're working on, uh, you know, to have what you call the bioavailability to get in the body. And then you started talking about playing around with gases so you could get that mixture right to get that mm -hmm. compositions out. And then I know that you then delved into the mechanical parts, the nozzles and things like that so that the gas could come out of the nozzle in the correct way. Um, could you tell us a little bit about how you're integrating all these wonderful ideas? Well, it's kind of like a, a, a matrix because there are a lot of moving parts in this, <coughs> in this um, product that, that make it achieve maybe a higher degree of efficiency. And one of them is the size of the nozzle. So, so it's, the, it's the pressure in the can and the size of the nozzle that creates the spray pattern. And our, the spray pattern can be two things. It can be very tight and, and uh, small molecules, or it can spray out wider. I mean, uh, people, just in layman's terms, if you've ever bought you know, a cleaning product, usually you can adjust the nozzle to get a tight spray pattern or a closer spray pattern. So we have the same thing with this. Um, so we have a, a patent basically on just about every iteration of pressure combined with the size of the nozzle to get the correct spray pattern. Um, we also have this, this bag, can, this um, canister contains one ingredient, which is sodium, the sodium formulation. We have some, some patents around a canister that would contain two or three so, because some things don't mix as well. So you may have to get them. If you've ever seen like a toothpaste that's, that, that uh, when you depress the, the top, it gives you like a, a white and a blue toothpaste. Yeah. Because those things don't mix as well. You only want them to be mixed at the time of use. Got it. So we have a lot of patents around just, just things like that. But there are a lot. It's kind of like I said, it's kind of like a matrix. Got it. Well, this is so fascinating about all the different types of technology you bring it to bear on what seems to be a simple product. Coming up, we'll be talking to Hank about how marketing affects how what he's doing in invention and inventors at work, and also how he plans to use intellectual property in his business model. We'll be right back. This is Invent Anything's Inventors at Work. 
check us out at ipcg.com. And if you're an inventor, tell us about your inventions. And now, back to John Cronin. Welcome back. This is Invent Anything, Inventors at Work with John Cronin. I'm here today interviewing a friend of mine, Hank Dershlag, who is an inventor of a new product to be coming out, BOA, B-O-A. And we've asked Hank a little bit about this in the previous session. Now we're going to talk about, and uh, you know, don't be shy, uh, Hank, because I know that you're an expert in marketing. Uh, how does marketing kind of affect the product development and where you're headed with BOA? Well, I, I don't know if I'm, a, I'm an expert. I appreciate the, the, the kudos. But, uh, um, you know, and I've always told people, because a lot of people say, Hank, I want to kind of try to invent things and do things. And I've always, always said, you can have the best invention, but if you don't have a path forward to sell it, it, it it's worthless. So when I've looked at, at opportunities, I've always tried to look at uh, look ahead, three or four steps ahead and say, all right, if I am successful with getting this product even made, how am I going to sell it? Where's the market? Where are the pitfalls? So, you know, the sports nutrition world is extremely crowded, just like the health and wellness. And, you know, we're looking at dietary supplements. All these spaces are so crowded, you can kind of get lost in the clutter. So uh, there are a couple of things that I think you need to do to try to differentiate your, differentiate your product. First, A, it has to be novel. You know, there are a million drinks and bars and gummies. So when I, when I came up with this aerosolizing uh, molecules, I thought, well, this is pretty novel. And I, you know, did hours and hours of searching, not only in the US, but internationally to see if there was anything like it. So I knew I had a pretty novel idea. You know, I knew I could get it done with the right people and the right amount of money. And then I, the other thing that had the differentiate myself was that was a cool name now boa actually stands for a blast of of optimal actives b-o-a and that's what we're doing we're, we're, we're trying to redefine so it's not a spray it's a it's a, it's a blast you're blasting those into someone's mouth so we're trying to get people to use new terms like blast um to to uh to describe our product um and so to set ourselves apart we had a novel product the other thing that we did was we put a lot of money into packaging and can design because you can get lost whether you're on the computer showing your products on the cell phone showing your products or in the in the uh, retail stores you can get lost so i think those were the first steps i did was a novelty good packaging pretty cool name right and i'm sure a lot of inventors that will watch this or, or hear this you know, it's not just about inventing the technology. There's a lot to invent beyond the technology, like in marketing. I think when when we met, and as a practicing inventor, Hank, we've been involved in different other inventions. IP became pretty important to this business model, I guess. And it's not only patents, but I know you have probably a fair amount of trade secrets. How did intellectual property, you know, play a role in the business? What, what are you using IP for? Is it a protection or is it, you know... How do you see the intellectual property that you're developing being used? You know, I see it as, as two things. I see it as a protection and I see it as a deterrent for other people to come in, for competitors to come in uh, while I develop my IP. And when I was in healthcare, I was exposed to some guys out of Johns Hopkins and they invented mostly around the durable medical equipment world. And they really just made literally a fortune taking existing inventions and then improving them. Uh, whether it's taking sutures and then impregnating the sutures with, you know, a prolif anti-proliferation drug, or we're doing or taking gauze and 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 making gauze um, uh, surgical gauze again in using a drug so it wouldn't you wouldn't get growth around that gauze after surgery. So I saw these guys do you know stent technology and catheter technology, and it was mainly improvements. But what they did was they kind of set up a little shield and they sheltered other people from coming in. So it gave them time to get their brand out there. So if you need two or three years, which I would need say to get BOA out there, the patents that I'm filing, we think can, can, can fend off people for a few years while we build our brand. And I remember one of the, the things you said to me, John, early on, which I never forgot was if you do your job right, your brand will be far more valuable than your IP. Right. Because there are always workarounds. Um, how you, you and I talk about working around other people's 
people's IP. So I know there's somebody out there that's smarter than me and can try to work around anything I do. But if I create my brand, then, then I have something that people can't, can't replicate. So the IP is across many aspects, but it's all around the product that's protecting the brand of that product. So it's kind of like a pyramid almost where the product is out there to get the brand locked in, which becomes the most valuable IP, but it's supported at least as this thing grows with the, the patents at the base of the pyramid, as I understand it. That's pretty clever. Yes. I, I'm wondering when, and for many inventors out there that are trying to make their inventions come alive as BOA is, how important was the intellectual property to investors? And, and what, are, what are your investors, you know, as or what we can tell other inventors at work, how important the investor, inventor, and IP relationship is? Well, the, the, the IP was crucial to our investors. And what I've always tried to do is develop some preliminary IP so I can set a high valuation for the beginning of my company. Because if I come in with just, um, my idea and no real protection, you know, I may get an investor come in and they'll say, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll back you, Hank, and we'll take 80% of your company. <laughs> so I've always tried to move the ball forward a little bit and get some IP, get a stake in the ground so that when I do have to go out and get investors, they will, um, th th I'll get a fair valuation. And the other thing that I've done over the years is I built a pretty good network of <coughs> call them really as part of the invention but you know i have formulators and i have um flavor scientists and just people that help add those are more more add more to the trade secrets not necessarily the ip but um but ip was crucial to our investors and it's going to be crucial even moving forward to our second and third round of of funding so i i, I think you and i'll be working together on a, on another series of of inventions around boa um, over the next year, year, two, two years. Let me take a great drink here. I'm going to cough. <coughs> I added a humidifier to my room so that um, it's less dry. You sound like you got a little scratch. Allergies. Here, John. I'll, uh, I'll edit this all out. No problem. Great. What was that? You said he'll edit it all out. I'll Don't edit worry. it out. I'll get it out. <coughs> okay. All right. Okay. And um, go. So Hank, maybe you could tell us a little bit about um, the sort of invention cycle that you're in. I mean, the beginning inventions you had was to create the products. Uh, but in talking to you, I understand that it's a continual process. This is going to be more inventing and more inventing. Could you tell us about that? Well, um, right now we filed, I think, 18 provisionals. And we'll be filing our, our, um, our full patents sometime this summer. So we already had a quick session on three or four more, more ideas that we've learned from uh, just talking with people. So now that our product is in the marketplace, we're getting feedback and getting different ideas. So anytime we get something that we think is, you know, has a, a, a nugget of novelty and, and, and can make our product better or be a sister product to what we have, we're taking a close look at it. Um, but mostly it's, it's be, because of the feedback we're getting by being into the, in the, in the market. And right now we're really only dealing with triathletes and cyclists and marathoners. Soon we'll be dealing with, um, we have some, do have some trainers signed up. You know, a lot of colleges are now using BOA Endure. Um, so we have some, so we're getting feedback and, and that's, that's um, kind of, we're just at the beginning of that cycle of filtering through that. We want to get these, these uh, first 18 kind of filed and put to bed and maybe it'll end up being 14. They may, may combine a few, but we'll get, we'll get that first series done and then we'll do another round of, of, um, of novel inventions. We have to get five or six more good ones. So clearly um, is one of my last questions here. Um, it, it seems to me, as you discuss your background and then BOA, the creation of the company with now inventions that are in many different technologies to make this one product work as we talked about. And then as you move forward, you know, you're talking about how you're interacting with the inventions as the bottom of the pyramid, but it's really about getting the product out to get the brand, you know, really recognized to be really the one of the most important parts of your IP position. And then the investors appear uh, to be right on board with you that that is fundamental to their investment. And also it's fundamental to your business model. 
And as a continual cycle, there'll be more and more improvements here. So I think one of the last questions to me is, um, you know, is it difficult to do all this inventing and running the business? And, you know, it, it must take an awful lot of time out of your life, Hank. Well, let, let me tell you, I kind of learned a long time ago what I'm good at and what I'm not good at. So, you know, my, 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 my dear friend and, and the CEO of BOA is, is a gentleman named John Pritchett. Uh, and John basically runs the company. You know, I, I handle all the formulations. So I work with our formulation team, which is in California and Florida. And then I work on any IP, you know, my, 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 my work with you and work with now with the IP attorney that we've, we've hired. So, you know, I always say I, I consider myself a pretty creative guy and a kind of a, not a mad scientist, but along those lines. <laughs> And you can't just flip a switch and be that, you know, it just has to come to you. So you can't say, oh, I'm going to sit down in my office and I'm going to invent something or create something. You kind of got to go off and, you know, maybe go for a, you know, a bike ride or, or, or take a walk or go play tennis or do something. And then things kind of come to you. So I got a pretty nice lifestyle, which I kind of fell into, but I have come up with some really novel things that, that, that you know, so far other people haven't. And now I have a nice team to help me real, you know, help me build this. You know, we have a nice staff. Like I said, our, our, our main company is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which is three and a half hours from me. So it shows you, I am in the office. I go there, tw tw uh, you know, once a week. Sometimes I stay overnight. Sometimes I drive up and drive back in the same day. And I get a lot of stuff done when I'm driving. Well, you know, I, I can drive from here to Winston-Salem, which is three and a half hours and not even turn the radio on because I'm thinking of, you know, <laughs> what can we do? So I do that an awful lot and that's just, you know, it works for me. Um, but so, so it, you know, I, I'm blessed to have a good team. So while it, I think it's hard work, it was hard work early, you know, I spent hours, countless hours, but once we started to build this, um, you know, my, I have a pretty good lifestyle. I feel good about my team and, and it's good. Wow. I mean, the idea that you can just sit in the car for three hours and not turn the radio on right. and that you're just thinking, uh, inventing. So our classical inventor at work is probably really doesn't sleep really. He's always inventing, coming up with new ideas and, and new directions. It's, it's oh, been okay. wonderful to, to talk with you. And, um, you know, if we could see your BOA product again on the screen, uh, I'll bet you we'll be seeing this in every football stadium. You know, we'll be seeing this basketball, right? We'll be seeing this pretty much what all the high performance athletes. Well, um, I, I, I hope you'll be seeing it. This product is mainly for high sweaters, you know, to get that sodium back. The next product, um, Boa Ignite, I said fuel earlier. We, we actually had a name change. Boa Ignite will be a bright yellow can and it will be more of a smart energy. But then we have some lifestyle products, John, that you and I talked about, products that, that'll be a pure energy product, kind of like a five hour energy type product called Boa Go. We have a product called Boa Lights Out, which is a sleep product. We have a pro product called Boa Fit, which is a metabolism booster and appetite suppressant. Um, so, I, you know, I always talk about the can. One more thing I do want to say is just hats off. I have a great formulation team because people can always say, oh, we're going to mix all these chemicals and it's going to do this, but it has to taste good. Right. Won't use it. You know, we're not giving them a capsule or a pill that they can swallow into their stomach. We, we want it has to be pleasurable. So we have some great, you know, flavor scientists. And I learned a while ago that, you know, the candy industry and the ice cream industry yields good flavor scientists. So we've snatched a few from those industries. And um, so it's, it's kind of a it's a it's just a great team. Um, and, and we hope that we can continue to introduce more BOA products and and continue to work with you on more ideas and, and different ways we can take the brand. Well, thank you so much. And I hope our viewers today uh, that, that are watching, and obviously this is recorded on our Invent Anything, Inventors at Work podcast series. Uh, we really thank you, uh, particularly for the insights of what it's like to be an inventor at work from inception to starting a company, uh, to creating all sorts of intellectual property, all sorts of improvements in the technology in a real market uh, and adding it now, getting it to the point that it's a continual cycle for invention. Uh, so we'll leave you with, with that and uh, happy inventing. I'm going to leave you with one thought too. People always, when they have a success or limited success, they always downplay um, how much the, the luck 
played into it. You know, people always downplay luck, but I want to tell people that, you know, without luck and without catching a break, the best inventor w- would still have a pretty hard time. So, you know, I was fortunate to meet you and, and, and uh, that helped us a lot to, to, to launch BOA. So we, you, you, you hold a dear place in our heart. Well, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Well, signing off, uh, Invent Anything, Inventors at Work, John Cronin. This is Invent Anything's Inventors at Work. Check us out at ipcg.com. And if you're an inventor, tell us about your inventions.